Donna, you can start now. So guys, once again, let's welcome Ona by giving her a clap because um, <laughs> we started our session yesterday and she still had the time to want to have just again today. <laughs> All right, thank you for that. So Ona, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Wiz. Guys, you're uh, very kind and I'm very happy to be here with you. I appreciate your time as well because it's important and um, that's that's okay. I mean, we all have a personal life. We all have uh, some emergencies ourselves, so it's totally fine with me. I'm happy that we managed to, uh, to get together today. Um, okay, Wisdom, may I share the screen with the presentation I have ready for today? Is that okay with you? Yeah, sure. So sure. I've shared that with them already so they can go through it before the class. Okay, okay. I would like to share my screen so I can have it uh, in handy to follow my ideas and so on. Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay, please confirm uh, if you can see my screen. Yes, I can. Yes. Okay, thank you, guys. Okay, I'll try. Just a moment. Okay, so um, I've changed the date for today, uh, the 9th October on the presentation. You may have the version with the 8th of October. Um, and to start with, hi, my name is Juana. I'm a technical writer. And experience in working with uh, IT companies starts back in 2008, where, uh, sorry, where I started as a um, help desk. Live campus. streaming um, is on. And and after that, um, I was able to um, change my career towards um, content and as a knowledge specialist. I've been working for more than three years. Uh, pretty soon, uh, I had an opportunity to join uh, Microsoft as a, um, as a vendor, as a contractor, and I started as a content editor for the Microsoft Partner Network. Then um, after a shift, I was uh, able to change gears and become an instructional designer. Um, then I switched companies and I went to Oracle where I worked with the demo team and my team was uh, preparing demos uh, for the products that Oracle has and starting July this year, so almost three months ago, just a bit over three months ago, I joined back Microsoft in the team's engineering organization as a senior technical writer. Um, I'm passionate about writing, about uh, explaining and organizing information. And I see this as my way to help others and also to try to find uh, some order in, in chaos. This is how I like to say it. Um, and um, let's, uh, let's see what we're going to talk about today. So we're we're talking about user guides, about troubleshooting guides, installation, integration, white papers, and the knowledge base. Just to let you guys know that in case I talk too fast or in case there's something that you would need me to, to stop and um, talk a bit more, you can always uh, stop me and I'll give more explanations. And at the end, we'll have uh, hopefully a couple of minutes for some questions, okay? So um, I thought to start today's presentation to highlight the importance of uh, technical writing. Um, I, um, I like to say that technical writing um, is very important for any team, for any product, because it drives the vision uh, towards knowledge and also the attention towards knowledge. Um, it also maps the information that an organization has for a product, but also for processes and procedures. Um, and uh, it brings into light the value of the resources that, uh, that are available. Um, I said here that it highlights the obvious. What I mean by that is that um, it organizes, in my vision, it organizes the information a technical writer 
so that you can easily see what is important and uh, it brings clarity when you have too many uh, information to work with. And I also mentioned the fact that it layers uh, data based on the history and evolution because working with different products, um, I was able to understand how the story of a product began and how um, it grew, how it changed and what was the evolution of that product. And this information is also um, visible in, um, in a knowledge base, in an article, so in the work of a technical writer. Okay, so um, I thought to have some examples to show with to you guys, and I decided to, to go with Stripe. Uh, the knowledge base of Stripe, it's very well known and it's appreciated by many technical writers from all over the world. Um, I decided not to choose a Microsoft product or a database from all over and the neither from Oracle or other companies um, because I wanted to um, I don't know, I wanted to stay away from uh, uh, product and information that uh, I had come across before and just try to be objective um, on a product and on a knowledge base. So I'm going to show you some images and going to point out some details um, on the documentation that uh, Stripe has. This is the page. And this is how it looks like. Um, and I've highlighted the place where uh, developers, for example, yeah, engineers uh, can find the information and how it is structured for you to, uh, to have an idea on how people um, have decided to organize the, the information they have available. Okay, to start with, user guide. The definition is something that um, I... Uh, I built based on information that I found in other places and based on what I know a user guide is. So a user guide is a document which describes a functionality. Yeah, The purpose of a user guide is to inform. It must be timeless and informational. So it provides information. You have to be objective. You don't have to get involved emotionally when writing a user guide. It's something um, very cold, let's say. Uh, and the guides, these guides are the building blocks for any product documentation. And um, it, it can be used by uh, any uh, by users and roles at any level. Uh, so a beginner, someone with medium uh, level of and someone with advanced. Um, and I also try to highlight some of these specifics. So things that you can note and what is the impact of a good user guide. So lifespan can be a year or more, but actually it, that more can mean years. Yeah. So if a product um, it's very stable and it has the support of the company of the organization that is building and selling that product, it can live for years. And uh, it's based on the information and the analysis that um, a technical writer has from an SME. An SME is a subject matter expert. So um, in other words, is the let's say is the person that knows how the product works uh, or uh, a specific feature, specific functionality of that product that is the expert you go to to have a confirmation for your um, writing. Maintenance can be done every six months or upon request. Of course, if there's a major um, update on, a, on an article, whether there's a user guide or any other type of guide, um, maintenance has to be done first upon a request the request can come from um, the SME or from a manager or from the product team. Uh, or if not, um, you know, the teams that I work with, uh, we had every six months um, a check, a verification to see whether the information in the user guide um, is still uh, available. And size, I've mentioned all because we can have user guides uh, that describe just the functionality, just a part of uh, how something works or we can have something pretty big, um, pages and pages of information about uh, the entire functionality of a product. And the impact, 
Well, it's used to track and trace the product evolution, and it has multiple perspectives. Uh, it can define processes and policies and procedures and concepts, and it applies um, the needs and aspiration in line with the strategy. What I mean by this is that um, you will always uh, have guidance from different departments when you write a user guide for a product. So it's not just, let's say, the engineers building the um, the product that you will communicate with, but also from marketing, from management, and so on. Um, I hear that there are some um, notifications on chat. Okay. Uh, just checking whether everything is fine. <laughs> okay. So here's an example. Yeah, from Stripe, um, they have a very good search uh, engine on the documentation. And um, this is how they are um, building um, a, a guide type article. So you have uh, getting started with Stripe. So you have the product name. It has to be in the title. Um, you have a short description just after that. And you start with the beginning. Whenever you write a guide, uh, especially when there is a user guide or we'll get next to installation guides and so on. You have to think of it as a journey, yeah? So each guide, it's a journey that brings your audience uh, to get to know the topic that you are talking about, yeah? So always think as you are a traveler and you just pick, on, pick someone by their hand and you just go on the journey and you explain to them and you show them what is the product about, yeah? So I've highlighted um, some aspects. For example, you have initial setup information. Um, you have um, images or you have a code samples. And a good user guide also has um, the, the structure, sometimes in written form. So uh, let's say in a Word or in a PDF uh, type of format, um, you can have the user guide with a table of content and you have the uh, anchors um, redirecting the, the reader to, the, to that point um, of the article. Going next to troubleshooting. Now, some people may call troubleshooting how-to guides. Maybe you've heard of this before. Uh, basically, uh, this type of um, article, let's call it, um, addresses a specific issue. So they are very specific. Uh, they can talk about an error. They can talk about the process. Sometimes uh, the, the point of a troubleshooting guide is just to explain how to resolve a situation. And they are sometimes based on a scenario. Yeah. It offers uh, the solution or the workaround if that's not possible, and it helps the audience to resolve something, just as I mentioned earlier, and most often is used by support teams. So I, in, in my experience, I was also working in a support team, and I know that troubleshooting guys are very, very important because not just that they guide the, uh, the reader to what towards what um, what they need to do, but at some point they offer guidance, whether they reach a point where they don't have the uh, technical settings or the technical possibilities to help even more. And they have to escalate that to a different team to request uh, um, help from other departments. So they offer guidance for that as well. Lifespan, six months or a year or more, again, this depends on the problem. Sometimes they say if an error is well documented or it's resolved, then the user guide can disappear in three months or so. Uh, and it's again uh, created based on real life examples, on examples from uh, the customers of a company for a product. And uh, the maintenance is uh, done whenever it's needed, whenever someone points an update or every three months. Now, the maintenance in this case is three months because um, it's um, something that it's used a lot by support teams. So you cannot just leave it uh, every six months to or more to see whether the information is still valid. And you have to make checks and verifications more often because they have a great impact on the a connection between the company selling a product or offering the support and your client. So what's the impact? Uh, well, they educate. 
and a guide to resolve problems, to resolve issues or technical errors. Uh, it brings together and it connects more departments, as I said earlier, for example, for support teams in the technical world, um, they, um, they can uh, bring up to light how a process to help a customer can be transferred from a department to another department. And at the same time, they facilitate this interaction be between different teams and different departments because um, sometimes in troubleshooting guys, mainly on online documentation, uh, you have uh, specific sections that can be um, addressed to different teams at different levels. Okay, so there's an example from our um, friends here at Stripe. First of all, um, the one good thing that I notice here, and I want to bring it to your attention as well, in the title, they have the word troubleshooting, or they have the word error, or they may have in some examples um, in the title or in the very beginning of the article uh, saying how to, yeah, because, for example, in a in a search um, um, uh, engine, this is how uh, the information is filtered, and then the search engine brings up the um, solutions and the articles you are looking for. Um, they state very clearly, for example, in this case, what is the error? If it's a, I don't know, three lines error message you have to mention the entire error message because, for example, the people using that article that you wrote may type just a section of the um, error. So if you don't read it all, the search engine will not know how to find that. So it's very important to be uh, very exact and very specific and not leave any detail aside. Uh, it can have code lines. It can have um, screen captures. That's very important. And again, the structure may contain uh, also uh, paragraphs and how the information is structured so you can jump from one uh, side of the article to another to get the information that you need. Okay. Installation guides. Well, the name <laughs> says it all. It explains uh, how to proceed with installing a product or maybe installing a feature, so uh, performing an upgrade to an existing product that you have. Uh, they can be also uh, based on scenarios and they can uh, address um, a larger range of situations, not just a single case. Um, they, can use, they can be used for trainings. All the other articles uh, types Again, can be used for trainings, but this one, it's, let's say, can be more specific at some point, uh, used by uh, trainers in their sessions. Lifespan, it can be one year, yeah, because um, in this very active and very fast-paced world moving forward, uh, the products uh, and upgrades can be faster than that. So the lifespan depends on the, on the dynamics of a product. Um, the maintenance is um, basically done at request or every three months. Size medium. So I mentioned the size here because sometimes um, having articles or guides that are too long, um, they can draw um, the audience away. So they, they draw the attention away from the subject. And it's a personal recommendation for you guys. Even if you have a lot to say uh, in an article, in a guide, try to be, I don't know, just speak on the topic. And if you have a lot, just break the information. Yeah. Um, even if the temptation is big to write, I don't know, uh, 10 pages long article for a guide and you consider the information is very useful, my suggestion is to break that information because at some point, people will not find what they are looking for in that article, even if you write it very well. Um, so it will be easy to break the information and then create a connection, create a link between these parts of the documentation that you write to guide your readers where to go to find what they need. Yeah, uh, The impact of installation guide is that they provide authenticity 
to products. They can promote best practices and strategies. And this is something that a lot of teams need whenever it comes to processes and procedures. They need to know the best practices. Yeah, what's the best way to do something? And again, they acknowledge the obvious information. So in an installation guide, you have very specific um, information. You have action verbs. Yeah, do this, go there, do that, download this, avoid that, and stuff like that. Yeah, so it has to be very direct. And um, as a structure, uh, I would recommend uh, lists or tables or um, in the images if you have an image with a full screen, yeah, just try to point the attention on that side of the screen in your image where the audience needs to go. Mainly, if you have an installation guide with, which has on the same page um, more than two steps, try to highlight which one is the first step and which one is the second step. Even if for you can be easy to understand which is which, you will never know. So you never you never assume what the audience is thinking. You just have to provide all the information they, uh, they would need. Okay, so coming back to our examples here, I found an installation guide here. Um, it says, you have the requirements, you have in the title the word installation. So definitely in a search uh, situation, the engine would return this uh, article. Yeah, that's again very important on how you structure the titles and how you structure the content of your article to help the search engine provide the information that uh, your uh, audience needs. You have the technical requirements. At the beginning, this is a very information aspect because, for example, when you have an installation process, um, you need to inform your reader um, what they need, technically speaking, to be able to install that. Um, needless to say that, uh, for example, for um, you, you install a program and you have um, a, win a Windows operating system 10, but uh, that program only runs on Windows 11. Yeah, so that's very important. Or maybe there are other um, steps, technical steps, or installation verification or certificates that need to be activated before the installation of this product. Yeah, uh, and then you continue with the steps. You can always offer um, automated steps. You can have uh, manual steps. Um, you can have, for example, um, I don't know, to be more inclusive, to have a process that um, uh, users may you may have for Windows operating system or for Mac operating system. So you can have that um, as well. And as with all other articles, we have uh, the paragraphs in the structure organized. Very nice. Okay. Integration guide. Now, in my experience, I have worked very little with integration guides because of the nature of the work that my uh, teams were performing. But I've done a bit of research on what an integration guide is, and it seems that it's a tutorial yeah, that shows you how to use or integrate different technologies. Yeah, and they provide information also on best practices and what are the terms and conditions because uh, when even 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 the same company, if um, different teams have to work together, um, they have to have in place a very well-designed process. Which team does what part and how and when? This is very important. And this is um, done by the management team with marketing or with product team. So you have to have these kind of details are very well uh, drawn for you yeah and you have to bring them to light and make them clear as clear as possible yeah um and it needs maintenance again upon request or every three uh, months um the impact is that they address technical issues so um, usually in, in a technical team, uh, integration happens when they have to um, address uh, very serious technical problems. These kinds of decisions, they don't just um, 
happen overnight um, and uh, you have to pay attention to all the details and the sequence yeah of all the steps that you are describing it scales efforts from different teams and different roles and it enables a new and a holistic uh, delivery of mechanisms i mentioned holistic because um, it's something from different areas, yeah? So you are integrating a product with uh, different uh, other technologies is not that simple. So you have to think from different sides. You have to take everything into, into consideration, the entire picture. You're not just thinking for your product or for your team or for a specific feature. Yeah, You have to see what's the impact of that decision and that step for other processes to come or updates to come for a product. So um, this is, again, very sensitive information to work with. And I found um, here uh, at our friends the, from Stripe um, a document that talks about integration. Yeah, so you can have a look at that. It has a very nice table. I'm a big fan of tables but uh, I don't like them that much when I have to um, edit them in the source code because they go wild from time to time, whether it's HTML or Markdown or any other um, uh, programming system. They just, they never listen to me. <laughs> so, But I'm a fan of tables because they arrange the information in a specific way that helps you. So it helps you understand as a, as a technical writer, even if you don't have the background to understand. Once you have everything organized in a table, this is how I work. If you have everything organized in a table and you have a sequence, you have details, you have a description, you have details, then you will be able yourself to explain to your audience um, the information that you're talking about. Yeah. So um, this is all I can say about integration uh, documentation because I haven't uh, written that much on, on this topic. So uh, this is all I can offer for now. White papers. White papers, um, they have details about policies, processes, and procedures. And I've developed some templates for the teams that I've worked with, specifically with this name, yeah, policy, processes, and procedure. And then I mentioned um, the product or the process for which it applies. So it's the kind of document that sets a direction, yeah? The most restrictive one is the policy. Then, so the policy, it's like um, what, what it's all about, yeah? Then you have the process. So it's like, uh, what exactly do I do? So I know the what, and now what? What do I do? Yeah, what are the actions that I have to take? And then the procedure. The procedure talks about um, how I, am I going to do this? Yeah, how am I going to uh, go through that process? And again, you have to put the hat of the user or your audience. Um, uh, whenever you write any type of document, and think uh, from their perspective, yeah, not yours, okay? So white papers, they are like a template, let's say, and they set a direction, and they have to be aligned with a strategy from an organization, from a company, or from a department. They explain what to do, yeah, and they give you a list of, of items and actions that the audience um, has to take, and there's a very strict dependency and this um, this ladder of how you arrange information is very important and it brings up front the details on how to do an action and how to obtain what you want to obtain. So you leave from one point and you have to uh, reach a different point. Yeah. So this guides you exactly what to do and how to do, when to do it and most importantly what kind of situations to avoid doing, yeah? And there's also a chronological order that has to be set in some situations. And that's why I'm, I'm saying this is very important. And this is the example from Stripe that I found. So it talks about uh, support policies um, and it starts with APIs and then SDK and then it goes deep. Um, 
to each type of, uh, of policy and, and support. Um, if I find a different example, which would be better, I will definitely um, get back to wisdom and tell him to, to reach out to you guys. But this is all I found for now. Okay. And now we reach the knowledge base. The knowledge base is the collection of data, of articles, of different support documentation, and not just support, but um, documentation in general um, that offer you a different perspective and gathers and the knowledge uh, from different departments, from different teams, and they uh, offer uh, everything they need. Yeah, they offer the guidance uh, on specific processes. Uh, they offer um, uh, general rules, restrictive rules. It's always validated by SMEs, by subject matter expert. And I'm saying this again and again and again because it's very important. Yeah. So in my experience, I know that. Um, a technical writer uh, can take um, accountability and they have to be accountable for what they write. But the actual content always has to have a sign off from an expert. This is very important. Yeah. So with a knowledge base, you manage, you support and you develop content for one team or multiple teams and at different levels. Yeah. You optimize processes and tools and you create cohesion for the information, yeah? And this is the example from Stripe. It's very well structured. This is the work of a lot of people and they're, they are integrating the concept of um, documentation as code. So they are integrating uh, the actual code used by engineers with the way they present the information. Uh, and I suggest you spend some time to, to have a look um, at this because um, I quite like it a lot. Uh, okay, I have here some notifications. Let me just have a look and see whether there's something. Okay, we're good. Okay. Okay, so now the impact of structured documentation. First of all, um, in regards to onboarding, so when a new member joins the team, it engages that action and it integrates the processes and, and uh, the tools with the people, especially the new people. It offers the possibility to have an improved skill set. Yeah. So it gives a perspective and possibilities and it gives a path to a newcomer or to the people that are just uh, interacting with the uh, knowledge base at the first time or they get to understand what's all about. Uh, they enable a transparent communication. Uh, you can track uh, the tools and the work efforts and the progress. And it enables communication between uh, the technical writer, between the product team and other teams and management, of course. Uh, it measures the, prog the progress, um, so it's easy to see how things are um, escalating. It's a very organic system, yeah, and it defines the KPIs, the key performance indicators. So it's the way how uh, management measures the success of individuals or roles or teams. And it defines the actual knowledge, yeah? So a knowledge base, a structured documentation defines the actual uh, knowledge of a, of a team, yeah? It follows the structure, uh, it increases the customer satisfaction, and um, it helps promoting the product and the work of that team. So taking them one by one, for example, with the onboarding, I thought to compare the four values of the Agile Manifesto with how you can implement that uh, into the documentation world. So individuals and interactions over processes and tools. How can you do that? You can connect individuals from different roles to build the content. Yeah. Second, working software over comprehensive documentation. This is quite funny, yeah? but I thought of it like uh, adding documentation snippets from tools 
to guide your audience and to have them use that. So it's a um, it's a combination between the two. Yeah, um, customer collaboration over contract negotiation. So you can cultivate a collaboration between uh, the content requesters and the content providers, and responding to change over following a plan. Now. Um, in documentation, you have to be as agile as your product is or as the team is. Yeah, you always have to adapt to change. You always have to be prepared for the change. You don't know what's coming, but you have to be prepared because there's always something changing, and um, you have to integrate that change to the work. Going secondly, improve skill set. How, how that uh, can be achieved? Well, first of all, ensure the content is easy to consume. Yeah. Categorize it by the topic or by the purpose and uh, determine the steps and the stakeholders. The stakeholders are the people influencing the documentation. Yeah. They are the ones that um, they give you the path, they give you the direction and they confirm the information at a high level, then you can identify the sources in use and you populate the list with documents and you determine the status and the action items. So you give a perspective, yeah, and what are the possibilities? And then you have the path. So um, you can uh, build a documentation with rules and guidelines so people will actually learn something new. You can train your team with the documentation that you have. And um, it's well known that trainers use documentation from um, the technical writers to um, uh, perform their, their training sessions. Um, you can clean up according to the guidelines and you can have a breakdown of the um, information and the items very clearly uh, defined. So you have a better prepared team for any kind of situation. Going thirdly to a transparent communication. Oh, I've doubled that there, sorry. Um, so the content purpose uh, is to offer what is needed and when it's needed. Again, it's very important that you don't think as a technical writer, but you think as your audience. You have to know your audience and you have to understand the product at the minimum level, and you have to synchronize that information with the team with the, and with the users and with your readers. So um, even if it's tempting to write as you would write for yourself, it's very important to write uh, for someone else. Yeah. And um, transparency enables success. Yeah. So it increases the visibility on different uh, uh, products and um, it references on different levels the action items that um, have to be done. They prioritize, so documentation prioritizes the the content based on um, on a release for a product, let's say, and on the needs and, and the impact of that release. And it defines the SME list that engage during each stage. Again, I'm coming back to the SME, the subject matter expert, because this role is very important. A subject matter expert, I don't know whether you have uh, learned about this in the previous sessions or you're going to learn it in the future, but these people can be engineers can be trainers, can be uh, seniors, yeah. Um, they can be managers, they can be from marketing, from sales, from any department. They are the experts and they are confirmed to you uh, by the manager and their manager and yours and you work with these people to create your content. So how um, is the impact when it comes to measure the progress, yeah? So first of all, you set the analysis on a creative process. Yeah, it's very difficult to analyze something that is creative as um, writing. But how do you do that? You First of all, you leverage the existing content and then you measure uh, the new content that needs to be added and you um, publish the new content in a very strategic way. So you always uh, think of the strategy and then you define the um, preferred outline. Um, you identify the metrics of a production flow. So um, 
the content creation time span can be different. Um, you have a different type of availability on your resources and you have different tools and you have a different usability from different um, roles at different levels. And all of this has to be very well documented. And with a good documentation, you have this structure very well defined. And this actually helps a lot to progress the work of, uh, of an entire team, of an entire department, or for a product. And you visualize the benefits. So if you have a good documentation, it's easy for you to see how the customer satisfactions of the results are. Um, I think it's needless to see say that uh, if you have information very well uh, structured and very well um, written, yeah, uh, the, the customer, and I'm not referring here as the customer uh, of a company for a product, for a technical writer, the customer can be an engineer. Yeah. So the people you are writing for, yeah. So they are satisfied with what they find and what they um, see in the documentation that you created, and you get a um, higher level of involvement yeah, for your, or your audience. Your stakeholders are more engaged, so people that can influence the product and the progress of a product, they are more engaged in, um, in this process because they see the results yeah, they see that good documentation has a positive impact, which is growing. So they get more involved and you have solutions that are applied. Yeah. So everything goes smoother. And lastly, a structured documentation defines the knowledge itself. Yeah. You follow a structure. You have a target. Yeah. You want to reach at some point. Um, so you take this uh, information and try to place it in three different areas. You start with your audience and then you think of the product and you consider also the market because that's very important. It's a specific um, detail, but it's very important. And all of this together in the middle, you have the content. That's how you think a very well-structured documentation knowledge base. And for the audience, you have to think of the dependencies, whether they are internal or external, the priorities, the needs, the timeline, the knowledge level. Yeah, Do you have a beginner? Do you have advanced? Then you talk with different people. Or the product, do I have a definition? Is it uh, clear the way you have to use the product? Are the features available? Do I have installation guides? Are there any specific security Details that I have to take into consideration. Are these documented? Uh, do I have a configuration? Do I have tools? Do I have the code? If my audience is the engineering team, do they have everything they need to do their work on a daily basis, but at the same time to progress, yeah, to go to the next level? And market-wise, it's very important because you have to understand what type of market are you addressing to? Uh, is it a competitive one? Is it for sales? Is it for an end user? Uh, do you have just um, um, markets geographically speaking? Yeah. Um, are they from Asia? Are, are they from Europe or Africa? Are they from the Americas? You have to take into consideration a very specific details for that market. So it happened to me that I work with very sensitive information that applied only for a specific group of customers from a specific um, country. Yeah, and for a different region on that country, it was a totally different procedure. So you have to be very careful with the sensitive information. And also you have to understand the interest of the market for the documentation that you write and the, their maturity, yeah? How much do they know about the product? Um, and I think <laughs> we reached the, the last uh, part. And I've talked a lot. I like to talk a lot. Uh, with each the Q&A, um, we have 10 minutes. I can stay even longer if you need. So please fire away your questions. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Awana, for that wonderful presentation. And I know that... My pleasure. Thank you for your time. All right, yeah, so this time for Q&A, so if you have your questions, so you can just drop it in the chat or you raise your hand, so I will probably let you talk. 
Okay, I have one. Yeah, I see here yeah. in the in the chat. I don't understand the knowledge base definition. Okay. Let's go back and let's see. So the, the knowledge base is a collection of data organized in such a war in such a form to facilitate the analysis of a product or a process um, and um, to to this to explain different kind of, of processes yeah so it's like a, an album if you want to so it's an album of information of articles with pictures with text and you can have videos as well that's fine um, where you explain on how something works and also you explain how to fix the problem and also you explain how to redirect uh, people from one team to another team to understand what they uh, what they have to do. Yeah, I hope I um, I've explained that. Next question. <laughs> 